Okay, so let's let's get going. Uh, welcome to the NVIDIA Omniverse Twitch stream. Uh, relatively new thing for us. Probably going to have some technical difficulties along the way, but uh, we've been practicing, so hopefully this one will go smooth. We have not had a Twitch stream where I'm involved, where there wasn't some type of audio issue. So, so far, so good. Hopefully everyone can hear me. We are, uh, so today is super exciting, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago. Um, for those just tuning in, uh, we are, uh, so this is NVIDIA Omniverse, which is a open platform uh, built for virtual collaboration and, uh, and real-time simulation. Uh, basically allows you to use the tools and the workflow that you already uh, know and love and uh, use them collaboratively uh, in real time, either by yourself or with other teammates. Uh, it's uh, an open beta right now. Uh, there's more information on the Twitch about page, but we are joined today by several members of the Isaac Sim team, which is uh, a, a recently released app on the Omniverse platform, which is basically robotic simulation application. So this is uh, going to be pretty cool. We're going to actually uh, take a look at uh, how you use it right from the start. So you don't have, have to have any experience. Um, but now, uh, without further ado, let me introduce Leela, who's the senior product manager here. Uh, and I'll let her introduce members of the team. And uh, I'm going to do my best to pretend I don't know anything about robotics so I can ask really simple questions, uh, which is actually the truth. So, uh, so I'll, I'll uh, sit back and, and uh, enjoy the ride and, and ask questions uh, during the show. But um, yeah, welcome, everybody. Welcome, Leela. Thank you, Edmar. Thanks for arranging this. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as Edmar said, this is Lila. I'm the product manager for Isaac Sim. And uh, this is our very first Isaac Sim session on Twitch. We're planning to have several of these uh, fun and informative and interactive sessions with uh, together uh, going forward. And we will have like our top engineers from Isaac Sim team here to be uh, uh, getting your ha hand or talking to, to you and let let you uh, uh, enjoy Isaac Sim actually more and uh, get you on the board faster. Awesome. So uh, for a start, I just want to say for those of you who haven't started Isaac Sim or don't have Isaac Sim up and running on your machine, uh, start with the question of what is Isaac Sim? Isaac Sim is the robotics and AI simulator. Uh, which uh, you could use for a uh, burning cycle of developments of your robotics uh, test and development and design on it to make your development faster and easier. If you would ask that, okay, who could use Isaac Sim? I would say uh, it, 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 Isaac Sim is good, going to be a good tool for many use cases, including if you are a roboticist or engineer, that you already have a robot in front of you and you have a task in mind or a new algorithm that you want to test. You have a manipulator, you want to do a new pick and place, or you have a mobile base that wants to go to points A or B, and you want to do this experiment on the simulator before doing it on the actual robot to iterate faster and actually avoid any breaking stuff, either the robot or anything that is close to it. Or you could be a hobbyist that wants to go and buy a, a small robot for itself and play around with it. And even more, it might be that you're one of those cool, cool kids that you design your own robot, right? You, you want to see how it works bef in the simulation before you actually design it and bring it to life. So Isaac Sim could be a useful tool for uh, many use cases. And that's what, what we had in mind while building it. So then you would ask, okay, there are already many uh, robotic simulations uh, out there. Why do we think that Isaac Sim would be a better tool for, uh, and for, for this use case? The first reason I would say is that Isaac Sim has all the right ingredients. We have, we're built on top of Omniverse, which give us the photorealistic visuals and the the physics, the, the simulation, the physics, realistic physics. So if you are looking for a virtual world to have your robots in it, you want this to be look like real and act like real. So that's what Omniverse Kit is providing as a platform. And on top of that, Omniverse Isaac Sim has been built with two key elements in mind, and that is one connectivity and second AI, which the next uh, era of robotics need that for sure. 
So the first hand is, okay, how can I uh, lock if you go back one uh, is going to be the first step if you're doing any robotic simulation is how do I bring my robot in which lock uh, our lead uh, engineer will talk in depth with you guys but we will we have provided many tool sets here including if you have a cat file or you have a URD file we have tried to make this seamless to bring it in and lo lo don't lose information and bring as long as much as information possible while you're importing your robot model and then the next step would be, okay, now I want my robot to have some sensors, right? So right now, Isaac Sim comes with a suite of sensors, including the camera, the ultrasound, the LIDAR, the force sensor, and this is gonna grow as, we, as we're as we moving forward towards end of the year. The next step I could say would, okay, I have my robot, I want to put my robot in a scene that I plan to test my robot in. My favorite scene is warehouse. I think warehouses are the coolest place for the robots to hang, hang out, but it could be for any application, this is different. And you, you have different ways of bringing your, like your scenes into Isaac Sim. One would be that you're a, like an artist your own and you can just design it from scratch here. But if not, and you already have some uh, scenes from previous work, or you just saw something in a marketplace, you can just, from all the connectors that Omniverse has, uh, you can bring those scenes into Isaac Sim. So again, having the connectivity in mind while designing Isaac Sim is going to make it easy for you to bring your scene or bring your robot into Isaac Sim. And once you have your scene and your robots all in, it's time to get the fun started. And you would uh, come up with a lot of parameters to set before doing your test. If you are a UI person, we, ha we have the, the UIs for you. It's going to be easy to figure out, but there's tons of documentation on it as well. But it's pretty intuitive. You can find it how to write. But if you're one of those roboticists that you don't like UI, you're all about writing Python and doing everything with Python, that's the right language to talk Isaac Sim as well. The uh, Isaac Sim, you can do anything you want through Python without even looking at the UI. So it's basically your choice the way that you want to play with Isaac Sim. And then after this, once you have your all the settings, you would say, okay, now I can connect to my brain part of the robot is going to be your SDK. You can that could be Python or it could be ROS or like it could be like Isaac SDK, and you can start controlling, moving your robot, assigning tasks, testing algorithms. So we have thought through all these workflows that you would have in mind. And as I said, the other key element for uh, Isaac Sim is the AI part. And that means the the next era, the robots of the next era would need to understand their environment better. They need perception. They need to know what is going on around them. And that requires a lot of data. This data is not always available to like the real data. Sometimes it's hard to get, sometimes it's expensive to get. And that's why uh, it's, it's getting pretty more common these days to use synthetic data for training and it either enhance what you have with the real data or just with all true synthetic data. And that's why we're giving you the tools. We're giving you, first of all, the ground truth information. It could be semantic segmentation, the bounding boxes, 2D, 3D, RGB, depth cameras, and along that, you need a lot of data. So you need to create a lot of scene to create a lot of data. And it's going to be very hard if an artist would sit and create all those scenes. And that's why you would probably start with a scene. If it's a warehouse, it's your living room, or it's uh, if it's a, like a retail store, and you would just randomize things the way that things will randomize in a real life, right? If you go to the store, the boxes is not always the same. The box will be a little bit here and there. The color might change. The texture might change. The, the position, the time of the day, the lighting. These are all the variation that we see every day in our around us. And that's why we, we give you all this tool to create all this randomization in the scene, which is still structured. It's still a warehouse as you look at it right now. And things are still like if, uh, in a, the right place, but in a different way. And this way you can create tons of or thousands of hundreds of thousands of scenes for data that you need for training. So 
as you can see, there's a lot of features and tool sets here for you to use. You can pick the ones that suits better or fits better to your application. And uh, speaking of applications, there are tons of applications that we're giving you examples to see which you can find the whether which one fits for you. We have a couple of manipulations, pick and places, uh, for, and then we have navigations examples as well. If you're a ROS guru, we have a couple of ROS examples. How to connect with them or if you're a big fan of like the uh, small robots out there that you can just have it by a couple of hundreds you don't want to burn your back on it is good we have some examples from them as well so we pretty much we're trying to cover all, most of the tastes around robotics and we will be happy to hear from you guys what 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 are you looking for to see an Isaac sim and hopefully we'll uh, the answer would be yes we'll have it or is on the on the roadmap we will have it soon Okay, I don't want to take too much time on this. Uh, I want to uh, let the fun begin. Uh, Haylock is going is our lead engineer on Isaac Sim. He would uh, have a lot of fun and um, <laughs> useful information for you. So uh, I'll pass it to him. Thank you, Haylock. Thanks, Lila. That was a great introduction. Can you guys hear me okay? How's everyone doing? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, that was cool. awesome. Great introduction. Yeah, so as uh, Leela said, um, Isaac Sim is trying to um, have, you know, robotics re uh, developers on um, reducing, you know, the iteration time, the de development time, testing things in Isaac Sim first, and then, you know, um, test your algorithms immediately on, you know, on one of these robots. Um, it could be on Jetson that's sitting next to your desk. Uh, you know, could be the Frankers or, you know, other types of robots. So let me walk you through how you might um, download or find Isaac Sim. So if you search for Isaac Sim, uh, the first link here will uh, show you all the highlights features. We just released the Isaac Sim 2021.1, uh, maybe two, three weeks ago. And this supports uh, multiple cameras uh, for ROS as well. Uh, that means that you now can simulate uh, your stereo cameras, RGB in depth, um, LIDARs and whatnot, and other types of sensors, and beam all of this to ROS and to Isaac SDK. So this is uh, all of these sensors uh, data being visualized in Arvis. Um, as Lila said, right, um, synthetic data is uh, quite important to us. Uh, with the benefits of our RTX uh, renderer, uh, realistic RTX renderer, the MDL materials, the PhysX5, uh, that allow to simulate all of this, you know, robot's movements. Uh, we hope to use all of this realistic synthetic data to train your robots and, and, and transfer those, you know, um, to the real robots. We uh, have different types of uh, manipulators. This is a UR10. Uh, we simulate the suction cups as well. So all of this, uh, the conveyor belt has, you know, this rolling bin. So, you know, the bins rolls down and then the robot picks up. Um, you can learn more about uh, individual features here uh, with all these links. So it will lead uh, you to our uh, docs. So in this case, the uh, the suction cups, you know, it simulates when it will break if, you know, the thing is too heavy, right? So the, the theme is, again, is trying to simulate things very realistically. So when you transfer to the real world, uh, it, it reduces your uh, testing time. In terms of uh, navigation, we uh, we now have, uh, we support the ROS navigation as well as the Isaac SDK navigation. This is a uh, Carter 2. Uh, we had the previous Carter 1 as well. And uh, Renatos, our uh, dev uh, engineers, will talk about his on chip importers, how you might rig uh, one of these you know, individual parts. This Kaya robot is quite interesting. You can see um, you know, it has all these rollers, and every single one you know, rolls on its axis, and each um, this wheel has like five rollers, so you know you can multiply that, and then you know that's quite a number of moving parts. Um, 
we previously had the step importer, the UIDF importer as well. So the on uh, on chip is now a, you know a new way for you to bring in your robots. Uh, we had uh, a few talks at the GDC previously. Um, talk about uh, again, you know, bringing your robots um, into SXM, how to do SIM to real transfer. So please, uh, you know, go check uh, all of these out. Uh, how to rig up your robots. Uh, I previously talked about, you know, how you rig up this quadruped uh, robot. Uh, today we're going to talk about the, the how to rig up the uh, enablers. Yeah, so please uh, have have a look on these. And uh, finally, you know, this is where you can download the uh, the Omnibus launcher, where you can find and install the Isaac Sim app. So you, you can click on these links. We also provide the Docker container so that you can run the Isaac Sim Docker on the cloud, and then beam down, you know, on the simulations images into a thinner client that running on your uh, your your laptop and your desktop, you know, if, if you do access in that way, you can share the GPU resources on the cloud as well. So, uh, Locke, uh, yes. can you tell a little bit more about the requirements? Like, what are what are the computer requirements to run sure. Omniverse Isaac Sim? Uh, good question. So now, if you go like search for Isaac Sim docs, the first link will uh, lead us to the the docs, and it has you know information about uh, what was needed? So because we are using the RTX renderer, so an RTX card is required. Um, yeah, so it leads you know like what GPUs you need. But if you don't have an RTX card again, like you know you can run things on the AWS. Uh, we have documentations on um, running you know on the cloud, you know cloud deployments for uh, AWS. Um, also, we have uh, something called the Try EJX program. Where you could, uh, you know, you could try, you know, all of this um, very high-end servers out and see if it fits your needs, uh, and then you know, you could share that uh, try eject servers with other developers. Does that uh, answer your questions, uh, Renato? Oh uh, yes. Cool. Right. So uh, let me show you the launcher. So this is our launcher, uh, our one-stop shop, where you can find um, all the latest news about Omniverse, uh, all the Omniverse applications. As I said, you know, we just released Isaac Sim on beta like three weeks ago. Uh, we show, you know, the benefits of synthetic data and any other types of uh, contests that might be going on with using, you know, the Omniverse Create uh, with the marble con um, marble contest. How you can use, you know, uh, Omniverse to generate synthetic data for for uh, simulating self-driving cars, teaching self-driving cars as well, right? Um, in the exchange, uh, you will find all the apps here. So we have um, all the create um, machinima, where Dan's already talked about. Uh, you can also find Isaac Simon here. Audio to face uh, on the learn tabs. Uh, we we have been making a lot of uh, video tutorials to show you how to use Omniverse. Um, so you could go over here and learn, you know, how you can use the uh, on-shape importer, how you can use the synthetic data pipeline. Um, I talked about how to rig this up, um, the, the the doc right here. So yeah, uh, learn is a, a, a great um, tool to use. So after you install the Isaac Sim. Um, you can click launch here. It will pop up um, this this window. So you can click here Isaac Sim and then you click launch, you know, it that will launch the Isaac Sim editor. Um, you can also, you know, run from the uh, commands, you know. So this is the root of the the, the package that you will see, right? So you can run like xm.h8 and this, it is the same way, uh, such as, you know, clicking on launch. Um, the other one is you can also, as I said, run um, this on in, in the headless mode, right? On the server. Or you, you could train, you know, your reinforcement learning in the headless mode. 
so that um, you can let it run and then you can choose whether you want to beam down and see what's going on or not. So this is uh, another great way to, to use Isaac Sim with all of this uh, mode as well. So Locke, uh, you mentioned about uh, rigging up uh, robots. Can you talk about what does, what does that process involve? Sure. Um, yeah, let me, let me open that uh, robot arm. This one is called uh, Dovebot. It, uh, it's quite affordable, uh, about a few hundred dollars. And I have one like, sitting right there and I'll, I'll demonstrate how we train in Isaac Sim to pick up cubes uh, and then, you know, test it on the real uh, robot. In terms of breaking up the uh, a robot, think of the your robot as a uh, an, uh, physics articulation. So articulation is a great physics 5 features. A robot basically just a bunch of links, right, that uh, are connected uh, with joints. So when you, let's say you import your robot in, this is the entire, um, this is what you see in Isaac Sim. Uh, on your right hand side with the stage window, you can see all of the individual parts, you know, and you have the base, you have the shoulder, and now we're going to go through the process of, uh, you know, convert these parts to rigid bodies and then join, uh, join them together so that they can move, right? Um, so first, um, one way to, to see uh, what, which part has already have the physics applied. So you can go to, you know, the eye, uh, so tie physics, mesh, and then all. So all of these pink lines, right? You uh, can see that I purposely uh, removed the right hand side so that I can go through the process uh, demonstrate to you guys, to you. Um, so the left hand side is already done. And then now we're going to do the same thing with um, the, the right hand side. So the first step is um, convert these to rigid bodies. You can do that by clicking, uh, you know, on select your part. So it will highlight, you know, in, the, in this way, uh, the mesh, right? And then you go one level up is this X form. Think of X form as like a container. It can contain, uh, you know, your ashes, your collision shapes, all of the uh, materials. So you can click on the X form, right click, your physics, uh, apply reset, and then rigid body. You can see instantly that it turns into, um, you know, a rigid body with the pink outlines. Um, the same way with, you know, let's do this for, for this finger. Um, same way, physics, apply, uh, preset, and rigid body, and, uh, and this one as well. Right. If you click play right now, you will see that, uh, yeah, let's try it out. Uh, see, it falls. They fall because they are not jointed to the main arm, right? So let, let's go do that. Um, you could create joints by first select uh, the, the logically this part will be jointed to this one so you could select the finger and then select the wrist note that the pivot point is down here so the order in which you select uh, is, is important so let, let's select the wrist first and then select the uh, the finger as you can see the pivot now is using the origins of this finger right so that is where we want the joint um, origin to be uh, after selecting those two you could right click create a physics joint and then a, a revolute joint so you can see a new joint is popped up right here a revolute joint is like a coplanar uh, joint right it, this is how that piece uh, should move the same way we want to uh, create like you know the joint from this to this again the uh, the order and then right click create physics uh, revolute joint um, we, we could click play right now like let's, let's create a joint for this part as well right the order so we uh, select the wrist and then um, the other piece 
you notice that the pivot right here because the origin of that piece is up there but we can move the pivot down uh, again create a physics joint a revolute joint and then you can use this to move this down something like this you can also you know use the the top or you know the front and the right different perspectives so that you can align this better but let's say we do that let's let's click play and see what it does see they are jointed but they are um they're they're not um they don't they don't stay in place because it doesn't have any drive yet so let let us a drive in here and so you can uh so logically right for this we want the drive over here so we can select that joint you go down to uh, add physics uh angular drive what the drive does is uh, you know it it holds the the drive there and it, it's like create a motor so that it can move the the joint uh, the stiffness of the drive tell you how fast you can move that piece right and then the damping uh, you might want some damping because in real robots you know they don't move immediately on those joints you know, they don't just snap so you want some realistic movement with with the damping um, so we, we we have that and then now let's let's see what is so now it, they stay in place but we still miss this part where this particular joint right here right so to complete the loop um, the thing about articulation is it it, it, it likes the tree structure right uh, I think of it your shoulders you know your shoulders elbow and whatnot and you just branch out but for loops like in this particular case um, we need to take a special care so let's let's create a joint between this one and this one. While you're doing that, actually, so we have a few questions coming in. Sure. Uh, so let's see if we can catch up on some of these. So the first question uh, <laughs> by someone on our team is: Do you name all your virtual robots? They all have little, little yeah. pet name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this one is uh, well, this one is Dothbot by another company, but we we have uh -huh. Kaya uh, here. Let, why don't I uh, show you? in the docs right we have all the included um robots up here so, so the you, ones that come when you install uh when you install isaac yeah so these these are part of you know the assets packets that you get you know you have the free warehouse that lila really likes about uh this is the previous uh carter mm -hmm. uh yeah it has a lidar and you know uh and then this is of course franca uh Dothbot. we have the jetbot so we, we show training this uh, in Isaac Seam and then transfer to the real JetBot as well. We have the Jet Racer. This is Kaya that uh, Renato is going to talk more about. Uh, cool. Yeah, we have on this mobile base robot UR10 with different types of uh, suction cups, right? And uh, we even have um, vehicles, basic vehicles. So think of vehicle just like another robot with a bunch of sensors as well, right? So you could use all this synthetic data. Um, and, and try to train your self-driving cars as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So I'll have a kind of specific purpose with some overlap, it looks like. That's cool. Yes. Um, so another question that someone asked, uh, is Isaac Sim under WSL? Uh, by WSL, I assume it is the Windows subsystems for Linux, right? Uh, if you could confirm that. Okay, let's assume that that is what they're asking. Would that be uh, uh, correct or no? I don't have the answer to that. Uh, okay, so we'll, yeah. we'll check and which we'll I can get back to you. Okay, okay. so yeah. uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to go to the next one. Uh, so let me see. Um, what's the most expensive robot you've ever used? I guess have you have you worked with the, one of the real robots on the? the um, yeah. So the uh, the the Franca is is quite, uh, I think, quite uh, expensive. How much is that one? I think it's like is it fifteen k, twenty k, or something like that. Uh, I don't know for sure, but yeah, it's of course um, more expensive. But then you have um, you know better accuracy in terms of controlling its joints, right? Mm -hmm. um, the the Dothbot is great for you know uh, testing the robot right on your desk. Everybody could. Uh, hopefully, you know, get one and then you know, test immediately on those. 
Also, I think we have showed uh, the Franca in action at one of our GTCs yep. in GTC China. Um, so yeah, like uh, it was doing smooth motions. Uh, hopefully, if you can show the video or something, but yeah, like so, if you search for. Um... It was part of Jensen's keynote. Yes. But... Yeah. As as you load that, uh, I will go ahead with some other ans uh, questions that I saw on yeah, the, in the chat. Uh, there's one. Uh, where was it? Uh, can you set up the robot joint with URDF file like in Ross? And the answer yet is yes. Uh, we do have a URDF importer, so you can uh, uh, set up your robot using the uh, assets for each joint and each. Uh, solid part of the robot uh, and model that and, and URDF. Uh, you can also import it using uh, the CAD files, uh, for example, from a step file. Uh, the drawback from the step file itself is uh, you would have to set up all the joints manually afterwards. And uh, the, the next step is uh, actually importing this on, uh, on shape. So you would uh, model your uh, robot uh, on on shape or import your step file on on shape and then use the geometry from the robot to set up the joints, uh, which would make it more accurate as well. So, and then from on shape, you can import it entirely with the full joint description uh, from, directly from the CAD file. Right. Yeah. So this is uh, what uh, Shivik was talking about. You know, we showed this in, uh, in GTC China um, uh, maybe two years back, and uh, yeah, Jensen was on stage. You know, interacting with the robots, it can be able to feed the robots. You know, real cubes, and uh, you know, the robots know how to react if you know you jam your hands in there it will re re react you know it will retract you know very smoothly all of this is being done by uh nathan and his um labs uh, up on seattle with the theater um yeah very very cool very great uh, uh technology here right um yeah do do check out this uh uh, the, uh, our docs, you know, we, we try to make uh, this very useful, you know, we try to document, you know, tips, things that you could look out for, how to get the best quality in terms of rendering, right, in terms of simulations for your, your robot, um, simulations for your robot needs. All right, so someone's asking, uh, uh, I think you did some of this in our rehearsal, but uh, if you'll have support for outdoor environments, uh, their name on it in the chat is let me, actually let me... Open Ocean Robotics. So it looks like this is something that's right up uh, right up their specialty. Um, so they're especially interested in water physics. Oh, water physics. Um, so so um, we we had uh, Flex, which you know, which is uh, able to simulate. You know, we we show uh, yeah. yeah, and. Uh... We are getting there in terms of supporting this on Isaac Sim right now. Uh, uh, future versions, like we are working on integrating this uh, technology for either soft bodies or multi bodies or fluids uh, directly uh, from Isaac Sim. So, uh, earlier releases of Isaac Jim that we had uh, work with Flex that uh, can simulate uh, uh, fluids like that. Uh, as uh, what an external environment, an outdoor environment would be. Uh, it's basically an environment that is unbounded, and yes, we can do that. Uh, you would just need the assets uh, to go on with it. Yeah, we need we need time to uh, integrate all this. We we already have Flow, which uh, in charge of simulating uh, fires. Um, yeah, uh, in Omniverse. So yeah, all of this, right? So yes. Um, and also, in terms of just just the look of the environment, uh, I will sh show you how to beautify the scenes a bit later uh, after I, I rig up this this robot. Um, so the the goal of this is to simulate this, right? This is how the real gripper moves, and you can see, you know, there's like one drive over here, and it is drive the entire loop right here. So let let's try to do that. Um, Right, so where are we? So we're right here. Um, we should create the remaining joints, which is between this and this. Uh, right here. So you again, select your... Um, so in this case, let's create uh, a uh, Revolut joints instead. So Revolut joints, think of it as like your shoulders, right? It's like a socket joint. 
uh, I'm sorry, spherical joint, not gravel joint. So again, I delete this. Yeah, and right click. A, a, a spherical joint right here right so spherical joint is your socket um, rebel joint is just coplanar so you know it's just on, on one plane uh, and if you simulate now again because articulation uh, doesn't like loop so you know if you simulate it, it it will not work but there's a thing you can do is you can exclude this from the the whole articulation so basically the job of this joint is to hold these two pieces together with just another normal fist X joint. Um, so you, you can click this on exclude articulations and then see where it go. Right. So, it, you know, it's it stay there. And then now you can drive the thing, right? You can uh, select your drive, the joint. You go down and then you could drag this. So as you can see, you know, it moves just like the real one. So when you use Python, so all of these steps can be done in Python as well. Uh, if you use Python and then you mirror these two joints, right? Then they will move together just like the, what the, yeah, just like this. So this is um, after rigging, right? This is what it can do. Because uh, we show you, you know, you can use uh, Python to control all of this. You can use the AI when you're searching for joints and you're dragging the target positions because you, you know, drop. And this is side by side, just to compare, right? And you can go in Isaac Seam and you can tune, you know, the joint limits uh, just to match uh, how the, the real robot should move. Right, uh, in terms of environments, right, this is quite dark, right? Uh, we, we could add something called a dome light. Uh, by going here, create light, dome light, and we can special a uh, specify a um, texture. Let's say uh, I like this uh, the sunflower. So you go in here. First, let me scale down the the ground plane. Again, all of this uh, widgets, you know, you can change or select from here, or you could use you know W E R. Um, and scale thing up and down, something like this. On the dome line, you can drag the sunflower in to the texture file. Uh, so you can see the environments here already. And then, you know, you can turn off that distant light. You can tune, you know, all of this uh, intensity of the, uh, the dome light. Uh, let's turn off this grid like 900 or so so here so this is just like you're working on outside right outdoor um, there are two different modes uh, for rendering the, this is uh, something called the uh, RTX real time you can see you know the FPX over here is quite high you know it looks quite good um, and the FPX is like 120 FPS uh, there's another mode which even give you more realistic uh, looks, uh, which is called the, the bath trace mode. So you can see the difference, right? As I to uh, toggle. Yeah, so path trace, um, because it's more realistic in terms of rendering, it takes a bit more uh, resources, you know, as you can see I'm uh, moving around. It's a tiny bit uh, slower, but this is great, you know, the path trace mode for posing your scenes. Um, say like so, and then you can press, you know, F10. It will save out, you know, the the screen for you. And you can show and hide, you know, different types like you know the physics joints and that, just just like that. Yeah. So so this um, also provide you a, 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 another way to work with different environments. Um, you can capture, you know, your robot uh, camera sensors with all of this realistic environments, right? We have like a, a room environment or, you know, any other outdoors uh, with this natural lighting. So uh, this hopefully should help you uh, transfer learning to the real robots. Okay, cool. So you, you rigged up the, uh, the DOF bot, you're able to um, simulate the gripper. 
let uh... oh another thing I like to to say is you know we have the the cache which is an omnibus uh, app that um, caches your materials compilations right so you know the first run it may be it, uh, it uh, takes a bit longer time but you know subsequent run because everything is cached so you know your bigger scenes can be open uh, quicker so all the cache you know on other useful apps you know um, they are in the docs let's uh, let's see something on the real robot yeah um, if you go to the uh, Isaac's examples, controlling, manipulation, and Duffot picking. Um, this is As you set this up, uh, I'll answer another question that I see in chat. Sure. Uh, can I have robots made of robots and swarm of robots? Uh, this is from Walker Gian. Uh, sorry if I misspelled your name. Uh, yes, we can. And actually, we do have one example where we have a Carter base that is the moving base with two wheels that we showed before. And a Frank arm on top of that. So this is basically a robot uh, with another robot appended on it. Yeah. Uh, and Swarm of Robots as well. Uh, we can simulate multiple in instances of the same robot. Uh, there's a video example where we have four uh, UR10 uh, arms building the other robot. I know that four is not really a swarm, but we can actually have multiple instances being simulated at once with uh, negligent dropping performance with that. Right. That's, that's a great point, right? Because the, the key point of simulation is you could test on these combinations, right? What if you put the Dolph bot on top of that jet racer? Uh, you know, you can see how the physics uh, interacts, right? Where, when things might top over, top, uh, you know, falls over. Um, we did the same thing with, you know, mounting the Frank on top of a Carter, as Renato said. So you can test all of this in Isaac Sim and see uh, how things worked before you, you move to the, the, the real robots as well. That's a, that's a and good then eventually, question. like setting uh, the uh, uh, anchor weight so that it doesn't fall over when the arm extends. Right. And this actually, I, if I if I recall correctly, this was one problem that we had with this uh, Franca arm yep. on top of the wheelbase. Yep. If we try to reach with the robot, it will basically uh, uh, change the center of mass and make it drop. It will just fall. Yep. So we will have to like put some anchor weights on the on the other side so that it would uh, compensate for that and allow for a wider range of movement. So right. this is one example where simulation helped us uh, prevent this issue uh, before seeing this uh, happen in the real one. Yeah. Some good questions. It's wild. Yeah, we we have the same issues with the real dog bot as well because it's uh, there's a you know like it's, there's a four like suction cups over here and you know it depends on how you how fast you swing the the robot you know the whole thing might might fall as well. So uh, yeah, th there's a Great way to test your robots. So, Locke, uh, one other interesting direction is like we talk about a lot about moving from sim to real. Like, is it also, uh, do we also take into consideration the fact that how can we take real values and integrate it in simulation and see how that works, right? Yep, yep. So, <clears throat> you could, let's say, measure before, let's say, you know, for the DOF bot. You could measure individual parts, right? And then you can go in here, then you type in the real um, values. The same way with you know, UIDF, right? You have the UIDF files and you have like mass and other types of uh, numbers. If you, you have them, yeah. AsexSim allows you to, um, to, to input those in and then test it out and see uh, how well it matches reality. So yeah, it, it could go both ways. Um, that's that's the, the the beauty of you know the digital twins, right? That's what we're trying to 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 go for. Right, like and and the reason I bring this point, like a couple of folks in the chat who are interested in robot twins and factory twins. So yeah, so it's like sim to real and real to sim. It works both ways, and and then it's really nice how we can fit in all these values in in Isaac Sim and Omniverse right. and, and try them out. Yeah, we 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 try to. Uh, make Isaac seem useful to developers. So, you know, you know, all your feedbacks, things that are not working, or, you know, these are the things that uh, you would like, you know, let, let, let us know. Um, yeah, we, we, we'll be on top of those. What's the, so we, that's a good question, actually. What's the, uh, what's the best place? So where's the best place for uh, folks to chat with the Isaac Sim team? Is it, uh, would it be on the Omniworks forums? Yeah, yeah, we have the uh, Isaac Sim forums. So again, you know, you could search for Isaac Sim. Uh, forum. Yeah, we, we have a lot. 
questions up there as well. Um, yeah, so these are all the all the questions, and we try to uh, answer them, you know, whenever we can. Um, so yeah, go go. You could use the forums. Um, you could uh, yeah go download Isaac uh, same and try it out and let us know. Cool. I think we'll be doing more of these streams also with your team. Which yeah. Is all right, that's a, a great way you put it, uh, Admiral. You know, you, you could come and talk to us during the stream. Well, this, I, I, you know, we like this uh, interact, interactive, and you know, um, casual conversations uh, amongst uh, developers. It it help us, you know, just the Isaac Sim, and uh, you know, other NVIDIA products in general in a in a useful direction. Definitely. Right. So, um, yeah, if. So this is one of the uh, samples that we ship, right? So we're able to load the, the DAF part. Um, we, so when you click play, there's something called, you know, pick up the cube. Um, and you can specify the real DAF part IP address over here. So, you know, if you go to, uh, let's say, I have the DAF part up and running like so. So this, uh, the Jupyter Notebooks um, is a good way to communicate with the real robots, right? And you could launch it. Uh, so this is the uh, the same to real DAF bot. So if you, you do this, maybe I should uh, move this over here. Let me know if you, yeah, I can see. Okay, good. You can see the real uh, oh, robot, yeah? Yep. There we go. All right, so you can see the real robots over here. Neely is ready to, like, do your command. It's like... Yeah. Um, and then in, in uh, Isaac Sim, we build a simple communications. And when we say, you know, you can specify the the real dark bot uh, IP address and maybe uh, you say pick up the cube you see they they move together let's do that again it's fast <laughs> yeah like like that robot is 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 yeah hey is able to pick up the cube do you see that wild yeah yeah that's that's like yeah like you know the mirroring the seem seem to real uh, we like to uh, you know close out this loop. All right, watch some things. Very fun. All right, pick up again. I think this is a good point to show. Uh, there was one more question about eigen modes and resonance, and you can actually see this happening in the simulation here. Uh, this robot actually uh, resonates a lot because uh, it has like some uh, some weird controls, and we can see that on the simulation we are able to reproduce this because every joint is actually uh, a damper. Uh, spring uh, scenario that we have a stiffness and a damping uh, to control uh, what is the target position. And then with that, we can actually simulate whatever resonance we want and uh, uh, match this to uh, what the real robot would have. Yeah. So um, for this example, we just use a simple networking communications. And Shubik would talk more about uh, how we could use ROS for this type of communication as well, right? Um, but yeah, in, in the future, uh, Twitch stream. Uh, I think, all right, let's, let's try to pick up the robot again. Pick up the cube again. And then like, if you do pick up again, it, it, the real one just throw my, my cubes away. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> Where is the cube? I, I just love this, like in, in, in Sim, right? You, you're able to uh, reset the cube, but in, in real, of course, uh, you know, you gotta figure out how to again, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta pick it up yourself, man. Or you build another robot arm and then you know, go figure out how to pick up the cube and then feed back to the uh, but like, so for the you could search for joint here, right? And that will show you all the available joint, and um, yeah, you can move, move this around, it moves, uh, yeah, you can drag all of this, and then you can send the current com uh, joint stage to the, the real. Do you see that? It moves uh, to match where the actual, uh, the same robot is. I see, cool. Yeah. Uh, another question that, that we have uh, that uh, resonates with what you're showing is, 
Do you control the real robot using coordinates or joints? And if it's coordinates, how do you uh, know that a controller will follow the same trajectory as the simulated controller? Right, so there's two modes. Um, there's something called the target positions, which basically control the, the joint positions, right? Um, so, you know, that's, that's why, you know, we can drag this and it, it is relative to how the joint uh, pivot is set up, what kind of uh, joints that is. So this is, you know, the, the base. So we just rotate around this. Uh, I think zero is like at the center, right? And then, oh, but for other types of robots, let's say the, the mobile base, uh, like the jetbot, you could use the, the velocity control as well. So you could specify a velocity and it will try to match uh, that velocity. In Isaac Sim, we also have uh, the motion planning integration done using the RMP, which is the Ryman, Ryman motion policy. Uh, and using that, you can basically define your own world with obstacles, and that will define the trajectory for the robot to take. So I think in one of the future streams, you can show that as well, how we can use RMPs to do motion planning. Actually, in the docs, which I think uh, Locke is showing right now, uh, that basically shows RMPs in action with trajectory planning. Uh, yeah, I'm showing it right now. You can see the RMP, right? It uh, allows you to simplify your joy control, just the gripper, instead of the entire IK of the, the arm. So the joint, um, the, the, you control the gripper with the RMPs and it will automatically figure out how to move the IKs of the rest of the, yeah. uh, the arm. The, the RMPs would already directly translate uh, to joint coordinates for the robot to follow. So that is how, like, uh, in the end, it will always be like a joint uh, control that we want to send to the robot. Uh, what the RMP does is we just control where we want the end effector to be, and it will generate the motion policies and give us the joint values to uh, achieve that specific position. At the same time, avoiding, you see how it avoids the yellow cube? Um... But if you know you, you turn off that obstacle, that of course it can collide with. Again, this is how it's able to avoid your real hands, right? It detects you know where the hands is, and it blends the RMP blends around the, your hand instead of smashing into it. So that RMP sort of provides you know like some you know, safety uh, functionality as well. All right, uh, yeah. So let's yeah, that's a lot, a lot of good, great questions. Uh, let me show you on the code side, right? Uh, I'll move this back. Hopefully, by the way, uh, welcome to my laundry room. Uh, Jensen has the <laughs> kitchen, and uh, I have my laundry room keynote. We all have laundry rooms. Cool. Oh, lucky ones, I guess. <laughs> as, as a setup, there's another question that I think is very interesting. Uh, can I specify an arbitrary lag, like six minutes or plus to simulate a uh, light speed round trip to Mars? So I assume uh, that the user wants to simulate some sort of uh, uh, environment uh, that is set up on Mars and communicating with the, uh, with, with the Earth. And this seems very interesting, and I'm sure you can. Uh, this is something that you uh, we provide timestamps and, and whatnot, so you could have something that controls, like create uh, an interface uh, around like what we would call an extension on Isaac Sim that uh, basically does what you want on, on the setup. So you can have something that simulates and uh, then you create your controller that says, okay, the signal was sent at this timestamp and then you will just react at this uh, after a round trip is done. So yes, I would say, yes, you can do that. Uh, it is a matter of uh, creating it. We don't natively support it. Uh, it it's up to the user. There's so many, so many uh, edge cases like this that it would be impossible for us to capture them all, but we provide the uh, flexibility to, for you to create your own in this case. Yeah, that's the beauty of Omniverse yeah. and Python, right? We, we build all these tools on top of Pythons and Omniverse, and, and you are able to go in and customize all of this, right? I will show you now, actually. Like, let's say this pick up the cube, right? How do you know like, what this function does? Where's, where's the code to um, be responsible for, for that particular button, right? So all of this is in, uh, in the... Uh, samples you know so if you go to like window and extension um, again onverse is built on a bunch of extensions you can have your own extension and there's the thing that that interests you the things that you want so if you search for let's say sample uh and and you click on this folder it will tell you where the code is for this particular um right 
So if you go to uh, your command and say code and you paste in that, that folder, right? It is the same folder uh, at the beginning, right? When we run the isaacsim.hh. So this is right here. So you, you do that. It will open up um, our code base in the um, Visual Studio code. And then you can search for that particular string, right? Pick up the cube. Oh, right there. Yeah. So it will point you to um, <laughs> I'm reading a chat at the same time, but yeah, a lot of good questions. Right, it will point you to uh, that particular piece of code uh, that's responsible for that, right? All of this is, you know, one Python file. Uh, you can trace it, uh, what it does, right? And, and another cool thing is you can even do uh, real-time debugging um, by enabling the VS Code extension. It will show you uh, this, and then you attach your Visual Studio Code to it, right? You go to you know the usual stuff. There's a uh, Python. Uh, there's attach, which attach to the existing running uh, sessions of uh, Isaac Sim. That also, shows, you know, if you want to debug Isaac Sim by just launching the uh, you know that Isaac Sim you know, you can run it, uh, launch in the release mode or in debug mode, and you can step through as well. The same way with the current file, you know, you can press F5 on you know this current file and um, right. So you, you select like attach, and you and now on the other side, you see now it's it's attached, and you can put the breakpoint here. Let's say you put the breakpoint here, and and then you can do something. See, so it breaks there, and then you know you can step through the code and understand uh, what the code is trying to do, right? In this way, you understand the the structure of the code better. Uh, you can debug, you can change things instantly. Like, so, you know, this is like, uh, you know, resetting the queue positions, you know, but in real life, you, know, you can reset. Uh, yeah, things like that. One more. Is there another question? Yeah, I think the other another question, which is a very generic, can you capture data from sensors placed on robot in Isaac? So yeah, I think uh, Isaac Sim supports multiple sensors, both. So we have um, camera-based sensors, uh, which includes RGB, depth, semantic segmentation, bounding boxes. Also, you have uh, simulated sensors uh, like LiDAR, ultrasonic, USS. Um, so all these sensors, you can capture uh, data uh, locally to your um, to your system. Uh, for synthetic uh, data, at least corresponding to the ca camera, we have a lot of uh, synthetic data recorder. Uh, we also have Python samples uh, using which you can do offline data generation uh, that you can use for training your deep learning models. Right. As Shubik said, you know, uh, yeah, we, we have you know all this um, this grant of RGBD two D three embedding boxes. The cool thing about again the RTX renderer is it's able to simulate you know like refractions and um, so we able to simulate glass right you, you see like how uh, light refracts here so you know an idea you could you know train your robot to pick up you know like glassware uh, we also have um, blast in in uh, in omnibus as well which can simulate you know uh, destructible. So, you know, we're you actually going to have a live stream specifically on Blast ah. soon. We're locking in the date right now, but that's going to happen uh, within weeks. Very cool. So you see, yeah, yeah you, with, with, with Paul. Yeah, you could combine all of these features together, right? That's how you know you can have a, a more uh, enriched um, experience for your robot as well, right? Yeah, that's the power of Omniverse. Right. Um, yeah, we we have. Um, Again, you know, LIDAR, um, USS. Uh, we also have fisheye camera as well. Um, so it depends on your... Uh, yeah, it, it depends on your needs. Uh, you could go and then create a, a new camera. Do we already have one here? Yeah, we have one here. Right here. Uh, you could go through and see what it's actually looking at. So you go camera and camera. That is what it's looking at right and then you can have different 
types of uh, rejections, you know, different yeah, all of these properties to support like fish islands, you know, this is pinhole, but if you go to a uh, polynomial, all right, you see? Uh, then you, of course, you can go and change all of this. Um, yeah, go, go, go try things out. Have you, so I'm curious, I know it's it's still pretty early, uh, but what have you seen anything really interesting from the community already? Yeah, um, so we, we posted, um, Things like uh, how to train your uh, jetbot with uh, reinforcement learning, right? So we wrote a, a blog post here. Um, so you think these are like quite visual things, right? So, you know, like hobbyists and, you know, younger kids, you know, they look at this and, and they say, hey, you know, I, I want to do that. Like, uh, I want to, uh, you know, just teach my robot to do things. Uh, they come, they, you know, they, they try to come up with their own ideas and, you know, uh, play around with, you know, software, play around with hardware. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, all of these uh, samples, uh, so we, we try to um, make Isaac seem useful and, and, and you know, again, useful to the community. But have you seen, have you seen people from the community uh, send in videos of, of crazy stuff they've done on uh, using Isaac already? Um, they and ask crazy is not the right word, but yeah, but they, they ask questions on the forums. They say, you know, hey, yeah. I try this and this, and, and this is what I see. So we, we see a healthy conversation there. Uh, we, we just, you know, um, yeah, 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 it'd be cool to, cool to see uh, more videos from the community. So if anyone watching, oh, uh, yeah, and then great. the uh, the Jetson community, right? They they built yeah. uh, you know, a lot of cool projects, um, yeah, so. We also try to combine, you know, again, testing in Isaac Sim and then um, transfer to the real Jetson robots, right? So the Jetson robot could be that jet bot, could be the Dove bot, could be other types of robots that you, you think of. So on the Jetson side, I would say there's a, a very good numbers of, um, you know, projects that have been ongoing as well. Yeah, uh, I would love to see what the community is building. Yeah. So definitely uh, post your stuff on the forums so we can take a look and share um right where are we okay so uh, another cool thing is like you can change or edit all of this right as you can see um like this is i had to manually type in but you know if you want you could go and say uh just copy and paste this over here so stop this uh because we shipped this so we don't know your ip address and then you know you could go in here and you you know you save it and it's instantly reflected here. Um, you go back and then you say, you load up the sample again, right? And then boom, you see, you don't see the zero anymore. Or you could, you know, change the text. Uh, yeah, that's the theme about the fast iteration time, right? It's, uh, it is, it's very important. Yeah, this shows off the hard reloading feature that we have in Isaac yep. Sim. Yep. You, ch you change something in your Python script and yeah, boom, you can see it in your, um, in your Isaac Sim UI as well. Okay, um, let's do another thing. Uh, I think there's one question which I think I got, I missed it. Uh, is there any notion of plugins for user add-ons? So uh, to answer partly to that, the entire Isaac Sim product is, is like Omniverse in base, and then we have extensions on top of Omniverse, which are specific to Isaac Sim. So currently everything is built as plugins or as add-ons. Uh, internally. Uh, we do plan in future to have this uh, support where users can build their own features and and, sub and, and release them as um, add-ons uh, that can integrate into Isaac Sim. Yeah, we have one of these documents about our extension sets, you know, the contact sensors, um, how you can attach, you know, contact sensors to your robot so you know like, how hard things uh, it applying forces and whatnot. Um, yeah, like every single thing like, like over here, right? They are, you know, they are extensions. So we have LiDAR, uh, we have USS down here too. Uh, this is Shubix uh, point clouds uh, of ultrasonic uh, sensors, uh, force or contact sensors. So we try to explain how things work, uh, how we simulate them. Uh, of course, we have the ROS and ROS2 bridge as well. Um, so, yeah. 
I think um, planning to do uh, some Ross. Uh, are we are we okay on time, or should we? Uh, well, that's a good question. So uh, let me see. We're about an hour in. Um, so it, it's up to uh, you and uh, people in the chat if you want us to go a little longer. Let or me, we let could, me, uh, is there any other questions that we have? Let me see. I see one question about the plugins, uh, that if we can add our own plugins, we can add. Yeah, uh, should Big Sorry show that? Did? Okay. Uh, okay yeah. Cool. Uh, but yeah why, why don't I show you the stuff that we are, uh, we are working on? So you you saw the uh, the RMP and the raw stuff, right? This will link directly to Shubix uh, raw. So you see how we do simple networking communication. We could also use ROS, right? We could use the RMP to control the DOF bot, and then because we already publish and support ROS uh, messages, um, we can publish all these joint states, and then we do the mirroring through ROS. Um, so this is how you can do that. Um, so if you go and you Google how to use uh, ROS uh, on multiple machines, uh, this is the guy that it's, it's saying, right? Basically, you just specify the uh, the ROS um, URI. So let's, let's do that and then see what we can do. Um, of course, first we have to run uh, ROS core. It's right. Yeah, this is the uh, okay so you specify this is my uh, let's say local IP address and then you specify you know, the ROS IP as well and then you run ROS core it will say hey you know the ROS core is running on this cool uh, you need to do the same with um, when you launch the Isaac Seam so that you know the ROS bridge knows where uh, it should publish things all right, and then we should run, now we run uh, Isaac Seam. All right, why why this is loading up? I will run on this the other side as well. So we have something called the Isaac Seam uh, through Rust to the real DOF bot as well. Let's uh, let's close this. And then let's launch the uh, the Jupyter notebook, which is this. What it does is it uh, again listen to uh, the joint state uh, topics, right? And one is received, you know, all these numbers, and then you can start uh, do the mirroring. Yeah. So again, let's press uh, Control Enter. This thing means it's busy crunching. Um, and let's load the RMP example here. Uh, let, let me show you the real robot. Uh, let me check the angle. Okay, so you can see the, the point of RMP is, again, with the synthetic data, you try to capture the images uh, through the real DOFBOT camera, right? So this is how we can ensure that when we transfer to the real DOFBOT, it it works um, because it's the same distributions, you know, in terms of points of views, right? I think we can try placing the viewport tool a little bit in a different window. Uh... Oh, let's, let's see, right. Good point. Thank you, Shubik. Uh, you over here. Yeah, this also shows the, the multi-camera feature that we have currently in Isaac Sim. Right. You can see two viewports. Uh, yeah, like, as you can see, when I move the the uh, cube, uh, the RMP will take care of you know, aiming that cube for me. Yeah, like, I don't need to. And then on the... Oops, sorry. To attack, so then. Running back. 
<laughs> Are you guys okay uh, with the fall? Yeah, what's going on? All right, let's do it again. Um, yeah, so sometimes you gotta restart the corner, no. but um, so we get the other side uh, on the same side on. Let's see if we can uh, run this thing as well. I think the thing that I ah. like about RMP is the, is the responsiveness, you know? Right. How smoothly it sometimes responds. And, Do you see that? And, you, and the real time. You see that as I, as I move the, the cube, like you see the real uh, one is, is moving as well? Yeah. Looks exact. Yeah, there, there might be some networking delay, but uh, yeah. So that's, that's another game, right? The power of RMP and combine all this technology, RMP, ROS. Uh, da, 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 together. I will show you quickly as the last thing how to uh, train the um, train how to detect use synthetic data to detect the uh, the cube. Right? We will show ship this uh, this samples. As as you load that, I will address one more question from the uh, from the chat. And this one actually will ask Leela because I'm biased for sure, and uh, Shobi probably is as well. <laughs> so, what is your favorite new feature of this version of Isaac Sim? Oof. Uh, go ahead. This is like asking a mother how, like, which part you like the most, right? I would for sure cannot answer that. <laughs> I think it's me, right, Lila? Uh, there's, 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 there's many great features, so uh, uh, it is hard to pick one that is a favorite. Like, yeah, yeah, actually, this like this release is like a handful of good features, like from the on-chip importer to the multi-camera to the like a ROS connection. Uh, it's it's honestly more than one. It's hard to pick. Yeah, so I think uh, from a robotic standpoint, like there are, there are three big parts that, that I look at. One is bringing your stuff into the simulation. The second step is where you rig up the robot and the environment, set it up for domain randomization, send it, set it up with semantics. And the third part is like communication, like how, how you can communicate with the robot. And in this specific release, we have made some great strides in all these three verticals. Um, and that's why it's very hard. Like. Uh, to pick up one single thing, like in the in the communication side, as Nina mentioned, there's ROS ROS2 uh, support uh, along with Isaac SDK, uh, and the in the in the importing side, which is the first pillar, uh, we have the on shape and the, the step importer. The on shape importer is the latest one. There's an upgraded uh, URDF importer, so there are like three major importers that brings in the various robots from the community into Isaac Sim, and in the middle we have this this platform where. Uh, you can add semantic information, domain randomization. So even in, even there, we have some cool new features, uh, along with obviously the multi-camera, synthetic data samples, and and the number, amount of samples that we have put in in this release, it, it's like humongous. Like uh, whatever whatever uh, samples we can use to demonstrate these various extensions has been huge. So yeah, th this this is like a, a release with a lot of use cases. Yeah, as well, um, two big set, right? We, uh, I, I really like, you know, we, we add more support for the ROS developers, uh, you know, on the stereo cameras. Um, yeah, so here, the, the sample index, right? It would tell you exactly, um, you know, certain samples you can run. All right, quickly before we, we go uh, over time, the, the synthetic, um, right? So on, on the, uh, the website, um, for the, the DOF bot, uh, right here, we showed, uh, how you can, of course, again, you know, um, do the mirroring rim to sim to real and, and how you can train, um, the, um, synthetic, use the synthetic data pipeline to, you know, with domain randomizations here, um, rotate, you know, change your backgrounds, you know, change your camera angles. Um, and then deploy all of this uh, train model on the the real uh, DOF, uh, on the real DOF bot as well. So um, yeah, if you if you follow the uh, the instruction here, like um, you can 
launch yeah Let's say uh yeah you are right here if you go and do this so this is another way to run Ajax sim right you can uh, run from the python side you just launch the the training program you know using this a particular python uh, sample um, again you could use visual studio code to uh, look at what the the code is doing uh, while this is loading here the right hand side is uh, the materials compilations that i talked about um, there's a nice progress bar to tell you where things are um, and this Dothbot cube detection is right here. I think my uh, it's too much fun over here. Uh, the cube. Yeah, you can go and, and you know read up one of this about how we we use a uh, PyTorch, right? Uh, and in particular, the faster RCNN model and feed in all of the synthetic data and then train it to recognize cubes it could be any things that you you want um you know other everyday objects right um you could use the on on shape or you could use the shape net uh, importer here too let's say you want to instead of cube you want to go and do uh bottles so you can swap that cube with the uh, the bottles you know from all of this uh great models I think this is gonna load a bit more. It might take a, but but then again, uh, I want to show the training in real time. But I think you guys get the idea. Again, um, please go and, and you know, read the code, uh, try things out. We. Uh, we train and then we deploy and then we, we repeat. Yeah, we are getting interesting questions in the chat and sure. and we'd be very excited to get more ideas of features that you would like to have in Isaac Sim. Right. Uh, so yeah, feel free to add those things in the chat um, or in the uh, forums that Locke has mentioned and, and we'd be happy to address that as developers in the future releases, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, launching. We also uh, add a lot of useful tips like uh, how to, you know, when you spawn things around, how you check for um, overlap, how you check for collision detections, right? So this is uh, all the thing that is, is, is just training right now, right? You could rotate uh, the camera, you can you know, randomize the, the texture so that when you move to the real cube, uh, it, it's able to pick up any cube, not just, you know, uh, the one that you train on. Um, I think that is uh, it. Uh, are there any other questions? Maybe some, uh, some more commentary stuff. Uh, did we miss anything here? Uh, so the Discord I posted this. I think I think that's it. Luck, that was amazing. Leela, Renato, Shobik, they're fantastic. This is super exciting work. Congratulations on hitting this amazing milestone and getting this out in the Omniverse. Uh, I think we will absolutely 100% do more of these live streams. I think they're super helpful uh, and we're getting lots of fantastic questions. So no doubt about it. Yeah. This is great to have the dream team on. So thank you so much. <laughs> I, I had a, a blast. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for organizing this, Edmar. And thanks everyone yeah. for spending time here. We, we love to talk to you guys in the future. Yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks, Edmar. It's always have fun to have Locke around. Like he enjoys the robot, so and he passes the joy. So thanks. Thanks, Edmar. <laughs> Thank you. All right, till next time, everybody. Thank you. Thank Stay you. Tuned. Thank you.